So, hopefully I am in focus, but hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Saskia and I am a final year psychology student. This video, I've done something kind of similar where basically I did a assignment and I just kind of filmed the process of me doing it. But basically I was emailed a few days ago by my dissertation supervisor. He was given the offer to write an article for a journal and he was like, hey Saskia, this is kind of similar to your dissertation. Do you want to do it? And I was like, oh my god, I'm going to be an author. I'm going to be a published author. So basically, background. My dissertation is looking at, well, in my university we do lit review dissertation, lit review research paper. My lit review question is, what are the neuropsychiatric effects of COVID? Essentially, like, when people get COVID in children. When children get COVID and then they develop, like, psychosis or, like, OCD, that's what I'm looking at. The question that he was given was, what are the long-term effects of COVID on the central nervous system? Now, those are the same question, apart from one section. So, like, my introduction is the exact same, because I've introduced what COVID is, long-term effects, and, like, nerves, neuro stuff. For the central nervous system question, the only thing I really have to add is, like, explicitly mention the central nervous system, and then an extra section of neurological effects. So when my lit review is neuropsychiatric, the paper is neurological and neuropsychiatric. So the neuropsychiatric I've got all the research for, the neurological I have to do the research for. Makes sense. I'll put the question on the screen. I don't think it's even a question, I think it's literally just a title. I'm pretty sure he just got sent long-term effects of COVID on central nervous system of children. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I started writing it yesterday and I thought I would go through the entire process with you as in like how long I've spent on everything. So I'm gonna go over to my computer, show you what I've done and then talk you through kind of everything. And for reference, today is the 1st of January. It is due in on the 18th of February, something along those lines. But I've got loads of deadlines first, so I'm prioritizing the other stuff. But if I get excited, I'll do that, because basically if I get into something, I get into it. Like yesterday, I spent hours doing it. Um, I'm gonna stop nattering and show you what I've done. So yeah, so yesterday was the 31st of December, and I did, honestly, a good bulk of it. Um, I think it's supposed to be between four and 5,000 words, my lit review is already 4,000 words of just the neuropsychiatric effect. So it's very easy for me to have a lot to say. So let me talk you through what I did yesterday. Basically, first thing I did, literally copy and pasted my intro from my lit review into this paper because it's the exact same thing. I just now need to modify it. So like I've mentioned, this is gonna be a bit like niche if you don't, considering you're not writing this paper, you might not understand everything, but here's what's happening. I've got like an introduction to what COVID is, the main like symptoms, like recovery rates, COVID in children specifically, and then how it can like affect the central nervous system. I need to write about long COVID specifically, as in like what long COVID is defined as. Then I've got a section on the pathophysiology of COVID, which is how the virus gets into your central nervous system or how it influences your central nervous system. So either by directly crossing into the central nervous system or breaking the blood brain barrier between the blood and the brain. And then because the barrier is broken, there's no barrier to cross. So I've written about that. Again, that was all pretty similar to what I'd already written. It was just more about specifically mentioning it being central nervous system related. Then my third section is now the clinical features of infection where basically what I've done is I found, I was trying to find articles by going on like a meta engine, which has like a hundred different search engines in it and just searching my question. But like that got me like 7,000 papers and I was like, mm, no. So I literally Googled long COVID children and then I Googled long COVID neuropsychiatry children, long COVID neurological children. And that's how I got all my papers. Um, and I then just literally went through like, the references like if they mentioned a specific thing i was like oh my god i'm gonna steal that paper that sounds great what i've then done is the thing the section i need to do 
is I need to add on to the intro of what long COVID is. On the clinical features of infection, I'm splitting it into neurological neuropsychiatric. Neuropsychiatric should be quite quick because I already know it all. Like I already got it all in like my dissertation graveyard. Neurological, I'm splitting it into symptoms. So I've currently written headaches, agusia and anosmia, loss of taste, loss of smell, fatigue, and then I need to keep going. And basically I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to structure this. So the way I'm currently doing it is like what they are, what their prevalence is when someone has COVID, when the symptom appears, so like whether it appears like pre-COVID, during infection, after infection, how long it persists for, because the question is about long-term effects, so kind of I should be looking for whether it's long-term or not, and then whether it's different between young and old children. Because what I found is actually older children, like above the age of, older children are defined as different things everywhere, but like six, 10 above, are much more likely to get long COVID and like much more likely to get at least the three symptoms I've looked at so far of COVID. I was then also trying to look for cases of MISCI, MIS C, which is multi system, multi inflammatory system, multi system inflammatory syndrome in children, which is basically like big boy COVID. Um, but I only actually found one paper on that, so we've kind of given up. So then what I've done is I've made a to do list of symptoms, as in like through the meta analyses, I found like the main neurological symptoms that could have a long term effect. Because there was things like strokes and seizures, but like, I don't really know if they're long term things because like most of it just said like they had one stroke and then they were fine, but like surely that stroke has affected their brain. Like, I'm not sure about those ones. But basically I've made a list of the symptoms to just now do the exact same structure for. So I now I did like, oh, altered mental status. I did write stroke, but I'm not sure about that one. Brain fog, concentration difficulties, sleep disorders. Then I will obviously do all of neuropsychiatric, um, which should be a lot faster. And then, basically, I had so many papers open yesterday, it was so stressful. So I just copy and pasted all of the links of them into this document to open. And I've obviously got like 20 papers I have open at once. What I do is I'll like pick my symptom and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do headaches. I'll then just control F headaches into every single one of them. And then I'll also Google long COVID headaches children. My search strategy is robust. Yesterday, I, I was in this document for a while. Yeah, yesterday I was in this document from four o'clock until 7 p.m. And I, I actually wrote, let's see. Mm, I would say I actually wrote 1,300 words and I just copy and pasted 387. So that's the background, that's what we're doing. I'm not gonna come back to this for a few days. You are a liar, actress. I'm probably gonna do some of it later because it is actually kind of interesting me. But basically I've got other things due in that I should, I should probably really be working on. So that's the intro to this paper. Ooh, enjoy. So while I watch Matilda, I'm gonna do some of the paper. I'm gonna write about what long COVID is, and then I might do one or two symptoms.
22 into Matilda and I've done one symptom I've done it. no I've I've done one symptom um <laughs> so it's now six o'clock don't know when I last updated watching vampire diaries though and neuropsychiatric symptoms are just so much quicker and easier because I've already got the information like look at that disgusting amount of tabs at the top my neuropsychiatric is already in my lit review, my search summary, or in my graveyard. So I've done cognitive dysfunction, and I've done tics and OCD. Now I just kind of need to do some more. I think I might do psychosis, but psychosis is a massive one. Um, so I don't know, but I think I'm going to do one more today. You are a liar, actress. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty sure I just said I was gonna write an entire other section, like the psychosis section. I am, in fact, not gonna do that. I am closing up after today, but today we have written 549 words, not quite as successful. Um, and we have been at it since, since 3.31. So I've done about three hours and 500 words. Um, it's not the most successful, but I'm not gonna lie, cognitive dysfunction took me so fucking long. Bye bye girls. Shouldn't closed. <laughs> bye. So it's now the 6th of January. I've not done anything since whenever I last updated. Or I might have done sleep disorders. I don't actually know what I last did. But basically for this journal, we have to submit all of our like references. It has to be in their specific one that they want which means I have to do this numbering thing so I installed Mendeley because I did have what's the one that all the lecturers love EndNote literally did not work for me so I've got I've had to move it into Word because you can't put Mendeley into Google Docs which is annoying so I've started doing all the numbering thing but like I'm not entirely sure how this works like if I oh okay perfect so like my bibliography is then already there and I can just insert that like we've done that but I'm still afraid of word so I'm not going to do my work in word I'm going to keep doing it in google docs and then just each paragraph I'll move over and like as I go through I'll start doing more of the references and like I have to put them into Mendeley I don't know if I'm being dumb but I can only like on the web I can only put them in by title on the reference manager I can only put them in by DOI why couldn't I do both on both places? Like, I don't really, I don't really get that, but I'm gonna try and do a section now, but honestly, I'm not in the mood. I have no more deadlines. All I've got is an exam on the 25th of January, but it's online, so it's not really a real thing. So basically, I'm gonna do more of this. I, I was trying to find something about like structural differences in the brain of kids who have long COVID, but I can't really find anything. Like, there's not really any literature on it, which means I can't write about it, because I was gonna do like, lab findings like blood tests versus like neurological neuroimaging findings but pretty much all of the blood findings are just like bestie it's inflammation um yeah so we're adding some more neurological things i'm adding encephalitis as a symptom and there's also encephalopathy there's lots of encephalo something however they're really difficult to write about in terms of like the long-term effects because most of the patients died um so like 
we don't know if they've got long-term effects because everyone that keeps getting encephalitis as a child is not is not surviving um oh, i don't know like it just it feels a bit premature to be trying to do a paper like this in the sense that we don't know the long-term outcomes yet so like like the pandemic's not over like we don't actually know any long-term outcomes like i've written that in there and i've been like you know it's not over it's also not when it's considered over it's not been over for very long so like if besties are going to develop problems you know like pretty much all of the literature is on like short-term outcomes of like oh they had this symptom for 60 days they had this symptom for like up to three months maybe like the longest i found i think is eight months and all of that is just stuff like anxiety which is all probably actually not caused by the infection but caused by the pandemic so this just feels a little bit premature to be doing but i guess we're doing it it is definitely harder than the other sections i've been writing though because obviously it's much more biology but biology that i don't really understand because it's like neuro which like i understand structurally things but they're like oh we did this analysis of an eeg and i'm like bestie i don't know so i've just been opening neurological journals and control effing encephalitis i did have to google encephalitis versus encephalopathy but basically i just copy and paste like the details of any case i can find under my heading we've done quite a lot yeah i have a section ready to do neuroimaging but i literally cannot find any good neuroimaging studies so that might be a failure that might be nothing not gonna lie besties, I forgot to film anything else, but I finished it on the 16th and sent it to my supervisor.